to wherever they belong. I ask you, Lord Jesus, for angelic help right now as I pray. Let, Lord God, everything that is coming against them, Lord God, be destroyed, be brought to ashes today. Hi, guys. How's it? Um, it's a uh, 527. And there's this excellent guy that I found on YouTube by the name of Evangelist Fernando Perez. Thank you. That has helped me pray. And ever since listening all night long, sorry, all throughout my sleep, to his live prayer sermons, and um, like they are something like 11 hours each, 12 hours each. Sometimes they're live, sometimes they are taken off the live stream but they were lives at some point so you see this like um the banner or rolling credit thing on the side where people chat in the lives as well just kind of commenting so it feels like people are actually with you and i was like remember i'm going through a lot of spiritual war i remember then being like father is this going to make a difference is this going to be like praying with brothers and sisters all night long when I listen to this prayer, is it actually going to cover me? Even if, I mean, Fernando, as you could hear in the background, he's got a very heavy Spanish accent. So he could be um, from Mexico or from any of the South American countries or, I mean, it's Spain uh, in and of itself. Uh, so their hours are different from mine, meaning that when this is live, I'm sleeping. And when they're um sleeping i'm awake so that's not the same is it as them and i praying in the same room together since i sometimes can't join the actual live chats the lives that he does so i tried it about a week ago uh to see if it's going to make any difference at all in my life and guys if i tell you despite the fact that i mean like literally the u.s um Mexico, that like whole joint is about eight or nine hours behind South Africa or ahead. I'm already sure which it is, but I do know that when it's night there, it's day with us and vice versa. Uh, I thought that maybe I'm wasting my time, but just so to prove that eternity is eternal and that we come from an eternal plane, that the kingdom of heaven is here. Um, and there is no time and space in the matters of heaven and earth in the matters of sorry in spiritual matters whatever they might be whether you belong to the kingdom of heaven or not there is no time and space when you tap into that realm it's eternal it's everlasting meaning that if a person is praying right now they're praying two minutes from now and they're also praying two minutes ago they are eternally past and eternally future if they're tapped into the spirit. Meaning that if you join a prayer session on YouTube that was done five years ago and you just like listen to it, dude, you're being prayed for. I don't know how many times I have um, felt blessed and released of some kind of like random stuff sitting on my chesty. By listening to one of these like uh, Robert Clancy prayer thingy my bobbies. Now, I'm not a big fan of breaking out into tongues because I'm very clearly uh, convicted by the Bible. The Bible is clear that we shouldn't do that in a public congregation because no one will understand if there's no one there to interpret. So that was, that's the main challenge that I have with Robert Clancy's ministry because every so often he breaks out into tongues. But I really feel blessed by his prayerfulness and what they do there. So I don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. However, I found Fernando. Evangelist Fernando Perez I found him and he does not ever break out into tongues at all He's prays in English from the beginning to the end Right? And that's it A language I can understand And I, it's like just been this um, Absolutely massive blessing To my life And I have proven, I feel as if I've done a proof of concept I've proven that it works Because of what deliverance I'm about to tell you now Concerning sleep And the abuse I've been enduring For almost a month, if not a month, tormented in spirit, unable to sleep at night. Okay, so I'm gonna do something that's gonna shock the living daylights out of you. You're gonna be like, oh, how, how dare you, Karaba? How, how, how dare you? How dare you expose me to that? I'm gonna take off my doogie. Today's the, I, um, okay, let me just grab. I did let you guys know that I've now got two phones because I got a hand me down that was given me and it's made my life so much easier. Um, I want to check the date out. It's the 30th of August, the officially second last day of this, what's been a very terrible month for me, even though it's my birthday month. Hello. Okay. It's been a horrendous month. About 
three weeks ago, before my birthday, which was on the 8th of August, uh, 2022, well, just generally every year it's that date, I asked the Lord to please, please, please give me 500 subscribers on my birthday. And I feel, I felt like God didn't answer me because I didn't get 500 subscribers by my birthday. By the time my birthday came, I had about, um, uh, like just like 290 something subscribers or 200 like whatever just like under 300 subscribers on my channel or maybe slightly no like under 300 subscribers and i was like uh please can i just like smash those 200 extra like uh, subscribers by my birthday and there's a video that i also did where i said um i am literally in too much war and i'm trying to build my youtube channel there's too much going on for me to focus on anything else so I can't even like get her onto my hair. If I tell you I have had this protective style on my head for four months. It's like shameful to even say that, right? Like I can't believe it. I'm shocked, right? I've had this for four months on my head because not because I'm trying to yes, because I'm trying to grow my hair, but mostly because I'm so afflicted that literally I can't pay attention to skin, hair, anything at all that has to do with me as a person and then I'm just trying to get this channel out and on top of that I've been getting really 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 afflicted spiritually so I ain't got time to bring this hair down as a result I have had so much growth like literally it's like a yeah amount of growth underneath my protective style over here because of the fact that I've had to neglect my hair another thing that I've also neglected is exercise and yesterday I haven't been at it like consistently I tried like literally out of this whole month I think I worked out about four days it's bad. Okay, it's bad. One, I'm 38. Can't afford to be letting myself go, really. It's at that age when you got to be consistent. You don't have leg room to just let go of yourself like you did when you were in your 20s. And secondly, I go nowhere. I do nothing. I am literally trapped. I'm a bit of a prisoner and I'm trying to come up with a little bit of a Shawshank redemption type establishment thing where I'm poking into a wall with a teaspoon, a chaba, trying to get some like sister that was rescued you know what i mean trying to get myself out of here like year by year year by year just poking out material out of a wall until eventually i've created a big fat tunnel through which i can squeeze myself out of um this situation my family members are entirely demon possessed literally all of them ever co as a collective and they are disinterested in my sorrow they have no interest in my sorrow and where I'm going in life, whether or not it ever suffices into anything that makes sense. So, I mean, when you're living amidst literally essentially like zombies, um, no amount of looking like you're sad and your life sucks and basically this is a hostage-taking situation is ever going to make them do any differently. When a person is under a spell, guys, when people are under demonic control, Koswan, try not like uh, the Satan is this condemned creature, okay? He is not about to be negotiated with. He does not feel sorry for anyone. He doesn't get to a point where he even experiences uh, hostage taker guilt. You know how some people can start to feel bad for their hostages? No, Satan never gets there. So if a person is arrested by Satan, if, if somebody is, is arrested by an entity, you can forget about walking around with a sob story looking like your life is bad, you know, trying to um, appeal to people's consciences. You can dream on the level of demon demonic oppression and possession of my family is so exquisite because of their involvement in the occult that I would be a prisoner for the rest of my life and the only time they would gain any kind of conviction of what they have done being wrong is if they died and so entered into the eternal plane and realized that oh snap I was deceived that's literally the only time so I am basically in trouble I gotta make like is it uh, who's more is it Morgan Freeman I stand corrected um I gotta do a Shawshank Redemption. I gotta escape, right? And my YouTube channel for me is that um, Shawshank Redemption. I've tried a lot of other things, but this is the one thing that's finally appearing to break through. I did let you guys know that uh, the Lord kept on giving me that Michelle song. You know Michelle from Destiny's Child? How she every... I think she like turned into a gospel musician or something. She did that song, including Beyonce and Kelly, called Jesus Yes or whatever. When Jesus is, yes, nobody can say no. Um, yeah, well, that song has been ringing in my mind. Like, literally almost every day, every couple of times that day, uh, in that day. Like, when Jesus is, yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus is, yes, nobody... It just keeps on ringing and ringing and ringing whether or not michelle is truly saved or beyond the world beyonce is definitely not but whether or not um michelle is is truly saved or that song is done with any good intention bottom line is when jesus says yes no one can say no is what christ is using and it's what christ is doing that's it so i keep on hearing it on a loop 
And uh, the Lord has been basically telling me, Garabo, you asked me for this. This is the time. You're being break, broken through. You, This is it. This is it. You're getting out of this. Your Shawshank Redemption, your teaspoon, you are like almost on the other side. You've been digging for eight years. You are now like you've got like a, a year left or something. That yeah, You have got a thin amount of wall left for you to chip through with that teaspoon, um, with that tablespoon. So don't you give up. I've been hearing that song on a loop during the worst spiritual war I could ever describe. Now listen to this, right? So I've got a very active spiritual imagination or a spiritual environment to climate. Um, things that just keep on, keep, keep on getting dropped in there. Sometimes I feel like I, I wish I had, uh, uh not asked God for the gift because it, it really has been torturous, torturous. Like, I mean, as in tormenting, uh, for me to have to deal with my spiritual gift because sometimes it like shocks me like a, and like an eel. It's like an electric eel. Anyway, whatever, fine. But uh, it also helps me understand what's actually going on. And it give, it keeps me alert and acute in the things of the spirit realm. So I'm going to be like, here, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, I keep getting wrenched out of sleep in like strange hours. I sometimes uh, get given a surprisingly amazing batch of hours of sleep. And I'm like, oh, who the funk it? I'm in the middle of a war and you know, I've got that kind of sleep. Hey, right? Depending really on the day. And based on, however, in spite of whether my sleep was good or my sleep was bad, whether I'm going through a spiritual war, my um, dream space in either good or bad sleep is always rife with activity. And by the amazing grace of God, I remember I've got, like my, my, my retention of, ni- of nightmares and dreams um, is high in comparison to other people, right? Um, that is just what the Lord has seen it fit to do. Even when I don't write them down, uh, you know, I just, I just recall, I remember. And sometimes God brings them to my understanding again uh, like a month later, like uh, since the last dream that I had of that nature. Like I would dream about something and then God would be like popping it in the mind, talk girl. And so that's like just what I do, right? So among the things that have been happening in the surgery oh another thing that also happens to me like you know when you're in a very heavy spiritual war and then you start to like doze off because you've been taken by tsunami right it's that tsunami vibe yeah it's coming at you like a tsumizum and then uh you it's like a delusion and then next thing you've got like gills and you're like breathing underwater so it's like literally you're like a thriller because you're alive even though you're supposed to be dead and in the middle of that sleepy heaviness while you're like you're awake but you're like dozing off because like you know spiritual wars like bah on you i have these like flash images some of the most poignant powerful very detailed um flashes of understanding like i can't call them visions i don't know what they are but they start and it's an understanding and yo guys Depending on what's going on, yo, the things I see, literally, and it's like, no, and it's enough to cause me to jump out of a desire to want to doze off once and for all and sleep because I'm being taken by that tsunami and like work another 10 hours because there's no way that I can sleep. The things I see. The things I see, guys. Like, and the Lord has this way of bringing information that I have seen on TV as well into explaining, and uh, uh, like, what's going on. The uh, attacks, the spiritual abuse. Yar. The monsters. The monsters. Like, literally monsters. I am speaking Shongololo. That would be a millipede or a centipede. In South Africa, we call it a Shongololo, right? But so, like Shongololo, guys, like a milli, like you know, that thing that, like, you know, centipede, millipede, depending on how many little segments it has. So tiny, you look at it on the floor, it looks so gross. It used to make me vomit in biology. Yeah, but like the size of an anaconda, small, you're like a truck, yeah, in my face, like that, trying to like chew my face, and I'm like, <gasps> Shongololo, right. Well, there's a Shongololo like that on uh, a show called Resident Evil, right? The most uh, uh, recent remake of Resident Evil on Netflix. Um, I'm, I'm about to get into discussing why I even watch these shows, right? Uh, it's an educational thing, but we're going to get into it another day, like I said, right? But this big fat Shongololo, it attacked this one survivor girl um, in the movie Resident, not movie, the show, Resident Evil, right? It attacked her and it like came from the ground. 
Ooh. And it was like, oh, there's a shongololo. And basically what the shongololo is, it's like millipedo, centipedo, like buggy thingy, like a silkworm, like a, a worm. Okay, it grew from being infected with the T virus, right? And the T virus made it like cellular multiplication or whatever caused it to be super chunky. So now human beings were at the beck and the call, even though they initially had dominion over the animals, even though they initially had um, leadership in this place, even though they are the ones that kept animals in a cage at zoos and stuff. Now the animals are running after them. Let's talk about tables turning. Talk about tables doing a 180. Okay, and these themes are really riddled all over the flex machine okay they're riddled over the entertainment industry guys we're gonna have another day where we discuss why it is that i even watch these shows and how it is that some ministries uh, or some people the lord has allowed them to tap in or check out such things in so far as they uh, in order to cause them to unravel what in the world is actually going on what we're being shown remember the devil is a counterfeiter the devil is in and of himself this fallen oki that um you know, really wants to be God and stuff, and he's like still trying, right? And so he tries to do everything that God has done, including prophesy, including pour out his spirit on all flesh, including causing people, young men and women, to dream dreams and prophesy. Hey, he's trying to be God on some and here I've got a scepter, <laughs> too. That's what the devil is trying to do. So since he is a counterfeiter, trying to be the antithesis of God, um, he then, uh, with his own servants, uh, grants prophecy he with his own people grants understanding and i've already spoken about that but we're going to like touch on it just ever so briefly he gives uh, servants of darkness people especially people who are involved in the occult lots and lots of understanding as to what he's doing which often tends to be an upside down version of what god is doing anyway it's like god is the grander scheme of things and the devil has been set apart for the day of our trouble it's written in god's word that the devil has been given uh, no sorry the lord has set apart everything for its purposes including the wicked for the day of trouble um, and that, yeah, so basically God uses everything, including wickedness, in order to bring about his grander scheme of ideas, what he's doing out here, gathering for himself a people. So, uh, um, what is this? The, 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 the... The, the life or the kingdom of darkness it is like something that is happening inside one of those like you know shake it in a minute snow glasses that like you know have a sprinkle effect but a real life version of what's happening on the like inside while there's like a bigger person on the outside actually controlling it the devil's kingdom is like that it is within an, an, an extenuating general bigger kingdom it is within the kingdom of God, it is within His realm of control. If you know what I mean, um, and everything that is in there. If we look at it as Christians from a large person perspective, from a big person perspective, checking inside this like you know snowball thingy, my bobby. You know those like thingy, my bobbies. What do they call them when you shake it and like it snows? It's like ah, oh, it's Christmas in the U.S. and South Africa is always very hot anyway. So entertainment industry in the United States has really made all of us think that we get snow in December. But you know, moving on. Okay, cool. Yeah, that thingy, my Bobby, the kingdom of darkness is like that. And if you gain that kind of perspective as a Christian, you will never fear. You will never be scared of what's going on. Now, I'm going to try and put all of these things in and help you understand why I'm here at this funny hour with these funny lighting conditions at this funny little hour in the morning and doing funny little things. We're going to get there, okay? <sighs> I watch shows on Netflix. And so far as there's no sex in them, I watch them, guys. I do. And uh, I've been, like, asking God, should I step, should I step? What's with the yearning? Am I wrong? Um, and every single time I watch something on Netflix, okay, it always makes it into my dreams. It always makes it into my understanding. And then I gain more knowledge as to what's happening over here with those images. Because it's like the kingdom of darkness. The Lord has set apart everything for its purposes, including the wicked for the day of trouble. The Lord is giving me understanding as to what the wicked for the day of trouble is doing, using this in very kaleidoscopic, picturesque ways. In and of myself, I'm quite creative. Oh yes, guys, I'm creative. Do you agree? I'm very creative. So... Like, my brain is a colorful, like, soccer match, you know? Pom-poms and everything, running referees, brrr, people running, scoring games. Yeah, that bug the bullseye. That's my life, you know what I mean? Uh, so, um, visions and dreams tend to also come with my character in it, my personality. Like, what's oh. Yeah, and, um... The more I've seen in the past, um, in light of what content I consumed, the more 
understanding again and a lot of these shows give me understanding in a way that I never would have had it if I didn't have the information it's almost as if though the ideas are planted in my head precisely because I've seen them before but because I'm also so clever I'm smart right I'm able to put pieces of the puzzle together I'm able to uh, what do they call that? Spatial reasoning? That's what it's called. Um, uh, th- th- whatever. Like being able to put things together to understand what they mean, even though the original meaning, uh, the original uh, plot or the original scheme of it did not say that. That was not what was happening in the movie or the show. But because I've got the Bible in my brain and I know how to put theory into practice and I know how to bring the Word of God into to basically understand what the Word of God is in light of this vision what is what god is showing me in this whole thing uh if it, if i hadn't seen a certain image before i would not be able to gauge what god is telling me about this thing like if you think about john at patmos and how it is that the book of revelation is this beautiful allegorical creative thing that's just so hard to figure out and one of the biggest reasons why john struggle why we struggle to understand the book of revelation today is because john when he was writing it, he was writing it based on what he had seen, right? He, there were no airplanes in his time. There were no nukes, no, no like bombs, no Hiroshima. There were no weapons of mass destruction. There were no guns. It was like David and Goliath. It's like, so get the slingshot. That's all you got, right? So days of, of, of John were basic, rudimentary, nothing at all, like what it is that we're dealing with here. There was no technology. And so therefore he had to, like, I believe he saw actual airplanes, he, he saw actual nukes, he saw actual, like, yeah, but like, how, what was he going to call them? How was he going to describe them? So he used, um, like, metaphors and analogies, allegory that was, li- like, likened to his time his era, his day, uh, type set up thing. Well, I am living in the 21st century. We are living in the 21st century. We're living in the 21st century. Okay. Uh, and we know about nukes. We know about Hiroshima. We know about, you know, Joe Biden. And so for those reasons, uh, and then Putin and the nuclear reactor in Ukraine that they're busy shooting around. We know about all that, right? Uh, uh, and so, therefore, we are able to basically put two and two together. So, what God is doing in these excellent last days, because they're adventurous, okay? What he's doing is basically unraveling one, packing the book of Revelation in a way that John and Patmos would not have been able to. He's giving us picturesque views um, of the reality of, of Revelation. Now, if you go back, right, into the history of Christendom, again, five seconds of trying to explain this, I can be long-winding, but we're getting to a point. Uh, you will have no, seen that there's been this, like, a debacle argument in the church you know people just kind of punching each other like no it's not right this is all metaphor no this is actually realistic no you guys don't know what you're talking about there's been this like war throughout the church as to how to interpret the bible uh because of how like the street is basically unbelievable some of the things in the bible are there has been a school of thought you know all come up coming up to the date that we're at now in christendom that has been like no guys it's all a metaphor no guys it's all, it's all an allegory i have a cash anyway what is it? no guys it's all an allegory no guys it's all a a, a thingy my bobby that's not the real deal over here We've had that going on, and then the years progress. Like, we get people that read the book of Revelation, we get people that read prophecy, basically, and they're like, this has definitely got to be some kind of, you know, shadow situation. It's not real. It can't be. Come on. So they get all metaphor about it. And then it happens, and they're like, oh, what a funk it! Oh, the funk it. Like, for instance, if you think about uh, the restoration of God's people to the Holy Land, hello, there in like 1941 or two or three, somewhere in the 40s, okay? If you think about that day before it happened, because people really wanted it to be the end of the world, goodness, we've been wanting it to be the end of the world for a minute because the world has been waxing worse ever since, ever since pretty much, like just ever since in Jin Jin Jin, right? It's been bad. And ever since Christ prophesied that he's going to be out here, he's going to like literally destroy this whole thing and start afresh. We were like, we want it, we want it, we want it, we want it wanted we wanted and so because we wanted it we just wanted every generation every era every age that's come has been like this is it i don't know how many people have like predicted the rapture all throughout the ages um the scriptures in what christ was talking about how it is that this uh, generation will not pass away before um 
any of these things happen in Matthew 24, there were people that were like, yeah, no, Christ is dead. So, like, after he got, he died and got resurrected, um, what? Like, just, let's just wait another, like, 40, 50 years after the death of Christ and we're going home, man. And they were, like, still here. So, they started to, like, come up with all different kinds of theories as to what that might have meant because it's an, it's an abomination and a blasphemy. It was actually quite pious of them to do that, to imagine that the Bible is inaccurate. So, they came up with a way to make it fit. Because let God, let, let, let everyone else be a liar before God will be a liar. Do you understand? So because we didn't understand what a generation was and all that jazz, Christians went back to the drawing board. And we're like, okay, so it's been a minute since Christ died and he hasn't returned. Um, we we, we got to find a way around this, right? We got to find a way around this. So they went on right ahead and uh, imagined that what he was actually talking about was that Israel or Jerusalem uh, is uh, what you might call this. It's like, you know, in us. It's in us, you know. Birth of replacement theology. We, we are the Jerusalem. It's us. Right? So they went and said that the Gentiles are the new Jews. Like, when the Bible did that ever get spoken? Anyway, you know what I'm saying? It was a way to cope. It was a way to indeed confirm that, you know, if God be a liar. Sorry, if we be, if we're, if we are confused, then let, let God be truth speaking and everybody else be a liar. Crying cat, please give me a, a time, a shot, okay? Like, I have a cat and she distracts me and I need to get this word out really quickly because I'm trying not to be laborious and long-winding. Anyway, whatever. Okay, so there's the cat. She wants to sleep. Okay, cool. Righto. Uh, and then there came a time when... I'm so distracted by this cat. Anyway, whatever. Um, and then there came a time when... Uh, uh, we, we, like I said, replacement theology, we believe that we were the Hebrews, that, uh, the people coming back to the land of God is all this evangelism happening across the world. We have finally embraced the one true and we're finally in the holy land and the holy land is inside us. We're that, you know what I mean? Totally ignoring and disregarding what the Jews had to do with it in the first place. What's the Jews got to do? Got to do with it? What's the Jews since they didn't respect the Lord? That was everybody's song. And there was a section of Christendom that was like, no, I'm sorry, no, it doesn't work out that way. Martin Luther, for instance, wanted that to be true, that we replace the Jews. He was kind of anti-Semitic, despite him being the baddest dude in the game. He was a dude that brought about the Protestant Reformation. We love him. He made that war with the Catholic Church. You know, we love Martin Luther. But he had the era of being anti-Semitic because of believing that he was in the end of days and that the Pope was the Antichrist and that's it. And so the way that he helped explain that away was to say, what's the Jews got to do, got to do with it? And he wrote off the children of God. God gave him grace, God gave him mercy, because, you know, we thank him for, like, what he did. Like, hello, now we know the difference between us and them, a uh, type set up thing. But that's how you people have, uh, when Bible prophecy is yet to be fulfilled, that's how they just kind of get around it. You know, let God be right and everybody else a liar. That's how they get around it. Uh, until... <laughs> In 1940 something, I think it's 1943, could be 47, it's in the 40s, happened, and then they got restored to their motherland, and it's like, boom, 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 oh, oh, boom, 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 hey. and now we like know that uh, that is a fulfilled prophecy. Every Bible prophecy that has not yet been fulfilled, Christians want to allegorize it, they want to go and metaphorize it, they want to go and Martin Luther it, they want to go and say, yo guys, we're leaving in a minute, <laughs> no, I lied, that's just a metaphor, until it becomes real. Long story short, that which is very, 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 very un-understandable uh, un and literally too taboo, unbelievable in the Bible for us to gauge now because like, the like time has not yet come for that prophecy to be fulfilled. Um, it has been predictably such that in the history of the human race, history of Christendom, it has been such that it became a literal thing. It became literal. It, it started out being allegorized and the church fighting over it, scraping each other's eyeballs out until it happened. And they were like, oh, I didn't mean to fight you there. Hey, like, really, no hard feelings. I, like, you know, true sky, truce. Coming together as church folk to make a truce, even though they were fighting, you know. If Apollos says this, if Cephas says that, you know, like, yeah, we're all following Jesus. Don't come here, be problematic type establishment thing. I spoke that whole long winding thing to get to this particular point. Uh, the point in question is, uh, you guys, when the Lord, uh, sorry, the Bible has been literal as it has unfolded. Prophecy has been literal. It has so far. Like many things that we believed were allegories, metaphors, because no way turned out to be literal. 
And the way that they are so taboo in the Bible, at the time when they're yet to come to pass, there's no way that we can fathom them as real. So we just like so marotted off as such. But we're living in an era where things are moving at such a ridiculous rate, at such a fast pace. You know, like a rodent doing that like wheel thing. That uh, what it is that would have been written off as allegorical just two years ago is like literally in your eyes now. It's just like, duh, realistic. And it's like, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, type thing. So based on just looking at the history of Christendom alone, I am like, mm -mm. to anybody at all that tries to tell me that the book of gener not generations, it could be. Anyway, the book of Revelation uh, is, uh, what is this? And uh, just a big fat chunky metaphor and that it's not chronological and that it, you know, you know, y'all like just, it's all about within and the what have you and type thing. Look, I'm, I'm all, I'm all for metaphors. The Bible is rich with allegory and much of the Bible will still maintain its allegorical, um, interpretation. Like, you know, you're not going to try it. You're not out here about to gouge out your eye and cut out your actual hand. Like some things are obviously metaphors. Okay. But then there are other things that are true, true. True, true. Like those giant scorpions. Or those giant, gar like, uh, is it scorpions with the sting of scorpions? Locusts with the sting of scorpions? Yeah, okay, so of course scorpions are stings of scorpions. I knew that, okay? <laughs> anyway, whatever. Those giant mobobies, I mean, I've also believed that. No, you know, these things, they're not real. They're, they're going to be a metaphor. It's going to be like a vaccine. It's going to be a jab, you guys. It's gonna be a jab, because I can't fathom a shongololo, the size of a bus. I can't. I can't fathom a shongololo, the size of a bus. I can't. I can't fathom a centipede or a millipede uh, as a giant pede. Really can't. You know who just thunk it? Until it is the real deal, just like that. The Book of Revelation also speaks about zombies, literal zombies. I don't know why they're so scared to use the word zombie these days. I'm zombie, 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 zombie. <laughs> <laughs> zombie I said it or oh, are you going to cancel my channel zombie anyway whatever they were scared to use the word zombie but like there are zombies I uh, spoken off in the bible guys like total zombies like dead people but like they're not nah, they're all over the show top thing they are described in this in, in the in, in the Old Testament and they're also described in the like in a new place uh, in the New Testament also like uh, you know a body not dying the worm dying not weeping and gnashing of teeth for eternity unfathomable but it's gonna happen and it's gonna be actual real fire and it's gonna be like actual real smoke going up actually forever so why not an actual shongololo you know what I mean yeah so uh yeah when i watch these shows that i sometimes i'm like maybe i should stop god because i mean you're good and and you don't want me watching this type thing and then the lord after watching one way i sort of kind of lost my self-control and my cool for a second and i watched anyway i was like consuming like junk basically on the uh on netflix and then i'm like i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop in the name of love because i'm all full of self-control you know what i mean yeah that's what's good type thing and then that same night, I get like a vision or a dream that helps me literally tie in something in the Bible with what I saw on Netflix. And that's why it's so hard for me to let go because it gives me the kaleidoscopical picturesque view that John at Patmos did not have, you guys. The fact that John did not see an actual nuke and yet he had to describe it was really rough. But God did say, that in the last days on poor is spread on all flesh and people like me, young women, and men gonna prophesy and we're like, how are we gonna do that? You know what I mean? Because I mean people have already prophesied the Bible is sealed, the canon of scripture is complete. That's what's good. It's closed. So sixty six books done. Like don't add none to it, please don't do it. Unless it's aligned to the word of God, it's not real prophecy. Unless it can be validated by the scriptures, it ain't real prophecy. It cannot go against the very further the valid word of God. So the Bible is the all encompassing authority and we're done. We're done with it, right? Like that's it. And anything else at all that we get breathed into is aligned to the Bible. It is in terms of the Bible, nothing extra has been given. Nothing extra has been given. It's just extra kaleidoscopic colorful um interpretation or like you know rubik's cube fixing of the book of revelation and all other eschatological books 
Insofar as it aligns with scripture, insofar as it aligns with scripture, uh, then you are right. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay, guys. Uh, well, uh, I have watched the movies that I have been getting, like, shockingly uh, given me. Like, literally, the past, like, week or two of spiritual war from here to forever, forever. Resident Evil, the old school version. Resident Evil, the new school version. Uh, Sandman, gangster show that sat on my heart like a millstone. Okay. Uh, what, what is the other one? God, please remind me, because I want to, like, speak real fast so that I don't, like, bore anyone, because I've got all this insecurity about people clicking off me. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, uh, as I continue to remember, I will show you. As to what in the world is Guan and <laughs> The kingdom of darkness is the kingdom of Satan. And it is an antithetical fallen version of what we're actually in these streets doing. And we have got, remember the Bible, what does the Bible say? Say it with me now. <laughs> we're seated in heavenly places with the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We're seated in heavenly places with the man Christ Jesus. And so essentially, Thank you. Got it. Lock and keys. The other one that was like, okay. Yeah. We're seated in heavenly places with the man Christ Jesus, right? So we're like up here and the earth is like down there and we're like, oh, looking at it, right? And as far as we can wear those like, you know, like goggles, those, what you call them, binoculars of Jesus, we're going to see the ant like situation that's on the ground. We are the body of Christ. It is written in God's word that the earth is like a footstool to the feet of the Most High. And so therefore, he like, it really like an ant. You know, he like little aunties just walking around crying. Like, hey, I'm the <laughs> Bashing the facet Emmanuel and yet they're a footstool. They're inside the footstool. So they're even smaller than the footstool. It's even worse. You know what I mean? For them. For human beings. And we're seated in those places with him. We're seated in the same environment that Christ sits in. Meaning that we also have God and ability to see Perhaps even with like, you know, a telescope looking down as opposed to up. The earth. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. We have got access to truly understand. If we suit ourselves to the most high, he'll give us understanding. We've got the power. Can't be too loud. It's still be hours of the morning. At least, no, it's not anymore. Look, the sun is starting to come out there. Yeah, you guys. Okay, so that's what's going on. It's like, wow, it's like flying kick in the like, cosmos, right? If the earth is a footstool to the Lord and we are seated in heavenly places with him, if we ask him, he can give us that view of the earth as well. And the devil knows and Satan knows what power we have. That's why he hates us because he had that access and now he doesn't anymore. <laughs> the devil is not omniscient. He's not omnipresent either. God only is and we have got God and he doesn't, meaning that we at any given moment can have more knowledge, more understanding than the devil because he's not omniscient, neither omnipresent, but we belong to the one who is. And so we can be given more understanding, meaning that Satan, no matter how much he might have the world at his grasp and at his we got him under our skin. We got him deep in our hearts. We got him in a bunch. In a way that like literally is unfathomable. And all these shows be showing you what's going on. Guys. And how the Lord warns me that this is what's going on is using these shows. And I'm like, ah, oh, God. begin to explain that to the church because they're going to judge me for watching junk on Netflix. And the Lord was like, you'll find a way my daughter around made you creative. I was like, okay. So, let's start with Sandman. Encephalitis lethargica. There is this like disease there. Disease. Disease called encephalitis lethargica where people just kind of sleep. The Sandman is this dude that is like the god of dreams and he gets kidnapped and so everybody that has been sleeping at the time he got kidnapped just stays asleep and doesn't wake up. And they get old in their sleep and life just like passes right then by. And it's so sad. And most people like just kind of die from it before even waking up. But there's like one lady, one lady 
that uh, goes on right ahead to have a baby with some other brother or, or was it sister? Because you know this like trans movement, binary okey looking. Can't really tell if he's a male or a female, but it's obviously a male because he's got a deep voice, but he's got a female thing going. Whatever. They're just trying to push so many stupid agendas in these shows. Um, Desire. The name of the brother of Dream is Desire, and Desire went and had a baby with a woman in her sleep because her brother Dream was like incarcerated for a season for like a hundred whole years, and so therefore, um, you know, he he decided to have like a field day in the Dream space of people that couldn't wake up because Dream was incarcerated. Whatever. That's me talking the plot of that whole show. Okay, uh, so the woman that was sleeping from the moment she was a child up until she was an old woman missed out on her life, nonetheless had a baby with desire in a dream, and this baby was born in real life. It actually existed. When she woke up from her coma, whatever you want to call it, uh, the baby was alive and waking life. And it was like, <laughs> things you can't even fathom in this waking plane. And the Lord... During the season, no, I was sleeping, uh, struggling to have a really good time. Uh? Yeah, during the season of my spiritual war, it's been a minute, what's going on? But month of August, birthday month, ish day. It's been rough. Okay? <laughs> yeah, no, during that month, y'all, yeah, I had a hard knock life. Hard knock. I still have it, but I can tell I'm coming up for air. <laughs> I'm coming up for air. It's 5 a.m. and I'm awake, and this is official. Like, I'm up. <laughs> I'm awake during the day, guys. Conquering dudes. Anyway, whatever, right, sir. During the time when I was being attacked by like a snee, a sleep harassment after having slept already like a season, like I'd been, I would have been sleeping. What is this? Uh, for I would have had a healthy eight hour sleep cycle. Um, and then like here it is that I'm like bombed now. By extra sleep, right? You know that spiritual war. It happens that way where you get bombed by sleep. Uh, after you've like, just, yeah, come out. You know what I mean? Of sleeping. Uh, one time when I was like, uh, after sleeping, the Lord was like, encephalitis lethargica. I was like, <gasps> that's from Sandman. I freaked out. You know why? Because when the Lord drops understanding into your spirit, it is so real a threat. It is so real an understanding of a charge against your life. It is comprehended so really, so realistically, like fluidly as in it's real that you know it is a threat against you. That if you don't wake up and fight it, you're in trouble. In the movie, Sandman, not movie, it's a, a series on Netflix. This woman, this one child, she's a child when it happens, goes to bed one night and never wakes up, but she doesn't die. She just falls asleep. All throughout her years, is in some kind of a catatonic state. And wakes up after all of her life has come and gone. She's in her 50s or 60s when she wakes up, because this guy is freed from prison. He has been freed. He was, uh, they, he was in that incarcerated like bull cell thing for a hundred years. How it is that this woman stayed um, alive throughout that time is not really even really explained in the show. Maybe it is. I just I guess didn't catch on to it. But she missed out her entire life, her schooling life, her everything. She lived it in dreams and. When she woke up, she imagined it was nothing but a dream. She started, she, she went to bed a child, woke up an old woman, and nothing of what she had dreamed, of the very colorful dream space she was living in, was actually real. She lived her whole life in a dream. And so she was disappointed when she woke up, only to learn that what it is that she had in a dream manifested into reality. She actually gave birth to a baby. Yeah. The Lord woke me up one time when I was like tsunamied by that deluge of spiritual attack with slumber, sleep. And God was like, be careful of encephalitis lethargica. And I instantly understood what that meant in spiritual terms, not even so much in terms of that movie or that show on Netflix called The Sandman. For me, it was what was attached to encephalitis lethargica. People who slept and never woke up and their whole life passed them by. But there were strangely things that manifest into the physical realm that came about as a result of what they dreamt about. God was telling me that 
I was having seeds of a future reality being planted in that state of slumber. That's why the devil is trying to pin me down to sleep even though I've gotten my eight hours in. I've gotten my eight hours. I should be thriving. I should be typing. I should be working. I should be getting my um, YouTube channel grown. But I want to sleep. I want to throw in the towel. And it is that sleep that is going to suck success fully if you capitulate to it. Plant whatever you're going to dream about in your life. So a lot of y'all that wake up in the morning feeling like, <gasps> thank goodness it was just a dream. <laughs> and then you go to work. And you don't pray about it. Or if you don't resist as a Christian the temptation to sleep. You are a person that is capitulating to encephalitis lethargica. Now, of course, there is no God of dreams. There is only one God. But what there likely is, is a demon of dreams. There is only one God under heaven by which, whose name we must be saved. His name is Jesus. And so everything else is a, is a counterfeit. So basically, the kingdom of darkness and his servants. Everybody knows the entertainment industry is extremely occultic. Um, it is. It has an, and involved a lot of people that are involved in dark arts. And... These guys get ideas from somewhere, guys. I, you know, I'm creative. I get my ideas from the most <laughs> from the most high. It's going on. The parable of the talents. It's good. good. <laughs> yeah, but there are people who do have a re a, a ruse, a source of <laughs> inspiration from somewhere, and it's uh, not Jesus. And these people, guys, like yeah, slack it, but there's like so much going on in the brain there. Let's just get it out. These people. Uh, tap into realities that they don't know are realities. They just think they're clever ideas, bright, sparky ideas, except it's what Satan is trying to proliferate in his little earth, in the footstool, in the lost glow beam of Bobby that is snowing that you're holding in your household. It is the devil running the earth. And if we look from a vantage point where we're chilling there, where Christ is sitting on the footstool of the earth, um, laying his feet down there, if we chill with him from that vantage point, we get to see from that view. We get to understand the grander scheme of things and so therefore also lack fear when all the things that are happening inside the glass thingy, my Bobby, is happening. We are fr from outside it, we're looking in, but we're in it too. Because remember, we're not yet redeemed from these bodies of death who will rescue me from it. Christ! We're not yet freed from this like fallen flesh. We operate by the spirit who puts to death the deeds of the body. So we have got access to outside of this flesh view, but we're also in the flesh, meaning that we are inside the glass ball, but also apart from it. And if we are constantly tapped into Christ and his vantage point, we will have no fear. Goodness gracious, battery power. <laughs>